Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, it's Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and I've just recorded a video and didn't capture the sound. So this is the second attempt. Uh, anyway, this is a quick summary about the community media discussion that takes place on this week's topic for our community media discussion that takes place on Thursdays uh, from 6pm. Uh, if you want to take part and join in, uh, go to decentered.co.uk. There's a Patreon button there, link there, or go to patreon.com slash slash decentered media. I uh, really do appreciate anybody who just gives us a bit of support, a pound, £2.50, the price of a coffee. It just kind of wanted to, it, it's a sense of encouragement. And two, it, it, any any funds that come through this, any support that we get through this just goes back into hosting the um zoom meetings and doing videos like this and and doing stuff and podcasts and and anything that's relevant to support and um our discussions about community media <clears throat> because there's a few places where us community media makers can really have kind of um conversations where we can sort some uh challenges out the topic for this week though is um I was fortunate enough to be at Dartington and Sound Art Radio at the weekend where I went to see uh, the Professor uh, Vinod Pavarala, who is the UNESCO Chair of Community Media at Hyderabad University. And he was given a presentation about the uh, Community Radio Continuous Improvement Toolkit. Uh, which uh, details and identifies some key principles about community radio, what its purpose is and how it functions as a way of uh, democratic media. I think one of the, it was a really lovely day and so many nice people there. And I did a podcast, which is available on the Decentered website. So go to decentered.co.uk for that. Uh, and I've written a blog as well about this session with some of the kind of thoughts about community media that it kind of reminded me of. I mean, it's stuff that we've really been doing for, you know, 20 years. Um, but one of the messages that Vinod had was really that we've in, in the UK, in a way, we've lost our way and we've kind of departed from some of these principles, participation, access, inclusivity, democracy, ownership, self-governance, those kind of principles. And I'll talk about them in a little bit more detail as we go through the summary uh, of, of issues. But they just just really the kind of the nature of community radio is something which is a space outside of the, the the industrial forms of media, the corporate forms of media. That it, I saw a great phrase the other day of kind of insurgent aesthetics that we don't have to just imitate what commercial radio do or have done, but we find our own voices and we find our own way of doing things and we do things in a way which is deprofessionalized that Raymond Williams phrase that I've talked about before uh, so it was a really great opportunity to kind of have a reminder of some of those principles and to talk to people who are new to them and haven't seen them before and don't know you know kind of the origins of community radio in the UK came out of the community media charter for example comes out of these UNESCO principles but it, it isn't so present in people's um, minds at the moment because we're thinking about you know survival we're thinking about funding projects we're thinking about meeting the, uh, uh, the, the needs and the expectations of our funding bodies so Vinod gave us a really good reminder that we do have a set of core principles and he called them the non-negotiable principles. And I think that's a, a, a really good way of, you know, kind of telling people, you know, focus on this and that's where you're doing your job right for community radio and community media it can be adapted to other forms of media but we talked about it a lot you know we spent a day talking about it and you can listen to a lot of Vinod's presentations on the podcast on the website but I thought I'd just go through, <clears throat> so our discussion is going to be about this on Thursday, and I thought I'd just go through some of the, the kind of main issues that uh, are in the page two of the, the toolkit, which are that, you know, you serve in a recognisable community, whether that's a community of identity, interests, 
place, uh, whether it's an intentional community, whether it's a community of um, the, what was the phrase I saw last night? It was a Raymond Williams phrase and I noted it down. Let me just see if I can find it because it is a very useful phrase. Uh, where's it gone? Um, I kind of, uh, where can I see the word Williams in this blog post? There's only blog posts. Sorry, I should have had this, I should, should have had this to hand. But it's, it's you know, we're, we're in search. I think this is kind of, you know, one of the things about uh, we lack in a kind of the modern age is we lack a strong sense of community. And so we are often searching for a sense of community and we're often trying to, you know, encompass a sense of um, community of interest or a community of identity. Uh, which goes, you know, things have changed so much. Which go, I talked about this last week when I talked about the seven Ps and the way in which we, you know, we transfer and trans, you know, kind of move around a lot more. We're no no longer so located within our, uh, our, our any specific area, um, and that we are, you know, less. A, it isn't as easy as as being able to um, to to exist with a, a strong sense of identity a strong sense of community identity so you know the, these things matter and um i can't find the phrase at the moment if i if i remember it i'll, I'll come back to it but it's in my blog um so you know the, a, a, a serving a purposeful community you know kind of a recognizable community or actually there are emergent communities as well and that was one of the interesting factors to think about you know as society changes and as people move around in society you know who is our community who do i identify with often our industrial legacy forms of media hold on to an idea of community from the past because it's reassuring and it's safe but who is serving the needs of emerging communities whether it's young people whether it's migrants whether it's you know, people who are you know, older people we, we, the dynamic of what community is doesn't stay static and so we've got to constantly renew what our sense of community is and how it might be you know how it's shaped so then we're promoting access to facilities and training and to the me means of production and distribution uh, because what we believe in is that it's a democratic uh, benefit from having as many people involved in the communications process as possible particularly when people are speaking for themselves and you know the frustration that we have of, with our mainstream media uh, or industrial media is that they are speaking on our behalf and speaking about us and we're not speaking for ourselves whether that's you know kind of people journalists reporters new program makers come in for a short period to a community say how terrible or wonderful it is and then disappear and and that community is left with no voice other than the kind of drive-by you know kind of reporting that often is is no longer embedded within our places anymore because we've had a hollowing out of the news industry and you know we've had a, a disconnection now between a lot of commu a lot of commercial radio stations now don't focus on place they focus on brand and personality and celebrity uh, rather than focusing on you know what what has cap i don't know capital wolverhampton and capital liverpool and capital leicester got anything to do with these places they it's 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 marginal it's largely irrelevant so what we're doing with community radio is we're offer, off, offering people the opportunity to get involved in an ish and initiate programming and to learn the process of making program and there was a great comment from vinod and he said it's not rocket science we're not te teaching people to be you know bbc standard broadcasters we're showing people how to open up a fader to not swear to not liable and slander anybody uh, and to and to have a conversation and to play some music and to talk about news that's relevant to their neighborhood or their community um and and that's a you know we've got to remember that it's not doesn't have to be technically sophisticated to do this and the technology is you know we often get caught up in this techno fetishism i like my devices and cameras as much as anybody um but you know you want something simple you want to keep it uh, straightforward so that what you're not doing is 
in, uh, in burdening people with looking at multiple screens and having to fire things off and keep a track of things you know kind of it's got to be the simplest uh setup and radio I've, i went to ghana a couple of years ago and the radio station there was great very simple a microphone a, a cd system or an mp3 player at the time connected to a computer and a, a mix and desk and you just opened the microphone when you needed to speak and you closed it. it was very simple and people you know really valued what it offered because it was a direct way of getting involved and participating and it wasn't relevant to um to any kind of you know it didn't look like st- the 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 flight deck on the sh- starship enterprise the command deck on the starship enterprise so we've got to use technology sparingly and so it's you know what are people motivated by we're motivated by community issues and not commercial issues uh, because the you know once you start being motivated by commercial issues and monetization of your content it changes the nature of that content you then start to accept that you have to do things that are popular and this sounds like an an i you know an oxymoron but we have to be prepared to do things which are not popular because people have to learn and you have to introduce things which are new uh, or things which are in danger of falling by the wayside. You know, language based programming uh, is not popular. Uh, you know, English language based programming, if you do everything in English, but there are many other languages. And for me, in a city like Leicester, there's so many different languages spoken. It's really important, but they only have a small audience that they can serve but they're entitled to the platform of you know to to have access to the airwaves as much as anybody else in in you know in proportion to you know the needs of the people who want to get involved and and want to listen um and it's also about like so we're trying to encourage an interaction and a relationship building between people who make content, community media makers, and the people who listen, and not seeing it as a one-way kind of um, activity in which, you know, it's kind of we know best, but, you know, what we're doing constantly is bringing new people in to fertilise, if you like, the uh, the process. And there's a learning process that goes on with that. Uh, so we've also got to make sure that this is, is managed by people from our communities and there's a self-management uh, process and that we're part of, uh, you know, controlling our own destiny, if you like. And this is a real challenge because you've got certain obligations under the Ofcom Broadcast Code if you're a broadcast license station. And you've also got, and not everybody is, there's lots of, you know, there's lots of in online stations these days, but the good ones are still putting accountability and safeguarding and, you know, kind of protection of people's privacy at the heart of what they do. And they're carrying that through not just on what they do on air, but they're doing that within the station itself as well. And, you know, how often do we look at what our, our equal opportunities practices are? Is our studio accessible? You know, when are we open? What does it take for people to come along, uh, you know, and, and to, to want to take part? Um, so that means that, you know, a community radio station has to be managed and run by community members and that they have to have a voice within the station in order to be able to, you know, that that comes through in the programmes that they make. Uh, And we're looking for a range and a flow of information and creative experiences that can be, you know, kind of uh, uh, encompassed by the whole of the station, not just sticking to a format-driven approach, not just sticking to a playing records approach, but exploring other ways of engaging with people. And I did a project last week with Leicester Stories, which is about we played a game. I've done a podcast this, if you go to the Leicester, Leicester Stories website, leicesterstories.uk, uh, where the the participants in the public engagement session were playing a strategy game about Leicester as a smart city, and we captured it and we recorded it and we've put that out as a radio program. Um, so we're promoting the right to communicate as a civil as a human right. Uh, fundamentally, you know, this is about the democratic pluralist. Uh, engage civic society um, and you know we, we there's a lot of cynicism about our mainstream industrial media they serve a very narrow set of interests commercial interests it's very difficult for them to make money now and the tech giants are you know kind of control a lot of the advertising income now 
but this is a space where we can kind of if you like roll our sleeves up and get involved and make stuff ourselves and in, but we have to do that in a way that encourages other people to come along on that journey and be part of that but we're editorially independent so we're not part of government we're not part of commercial bodies we're not tied with a religious some some people are tied with a religious organization but that still has to be an obligation to be editorially independent and we're not you know political influences over you know big p political influences is discouraged um nobody determines the program and get editorial policies other than the people who are involved themselves and that comes through a kind of sense of agreement uh, and it's really kind of you know how are we ensuring that everybody in our community has a has a voice within our radio stations that are able to carry out and take part in producing pro, uh, programs and content uh, so that we're bringing in people who would otherwise be isolated or marginalized or overlooked so that they're at the heart of what we do rather than it just being the usual suspects who kind of are quite confident and relaxed and familiar with this but the job is is to keep bringing new people in to find their voice and to share that voice and then to make sure that you know the practices that we've got in place are accountable uh, for how that is done so the toolkit is a really i think it's a really good way of uh, demonstrating a lot of these things in practice we're going to talk about it on thursday uh, that's tomorrow um, uh, so if you want to join in that conversation as i say go over to decentered.co.uk or you can follow on twitter and instagram at decentered media and if you want to sign up, go to uh, patreon.com slash decentered media. Uh, but till next time, take care and have fun. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at decentered media.